We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normal, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Hello, I'm Barry, and this is Jamie. And this, well, this is the Bible of French classical cuisine. It's called Le Repertoire de la Cuisine, and it was written in 1914. And it pretty much assumes that you know all the cooking techniques of that time before you've read it. Should we see how our chefs get on? Boys, I love these. You have absolutely no idea what's about to hit you, do you? You're not in a gimp suit, so that bodes well. Not yet. <laughs> oh, I don't get to unwrap it. Got that one at home. Oh, I have heard of it. I've never read it. I've never seen it. I've never held it. I've heard of it. Well, I'm scared. It is a reference book for chefs from the 1900s. La bonne cuisine est la base de veritable oh, no. bon Oh, um, this French. It sounds like the kind of book you guys should have and should use and should be able to use very well as classically trained chefs yourselves. Obviously, you've never cooked from it. You just reference it, don't you? So the reason they can fit 6,000 recipes into this book is because there are no ingredient lists, there are no weights and measures, there's no method. It's just a list of elements on a plate that you're expected to know how to make and I assume interpret how to plate yourself. We're all on the same page. Which page are we on, Jay? 108. We're into the um, fillet of sole or sole category. So the recipe here, poached and coated with white wine sauce, garnished with small heaps of carrots, balls of turnips, green peas, cauliflowers, asparagus heads, noisette potatoes, alternate the colours. I think we got this. I think this is fine. Ozzy, who's working with us at the moment and goes to your college. UCB, yes. Uh, he was actually challenged as one of his assignments to cook the Sol Renaissance. Oh, really? Ah, interesting. Oh, and nice. so, because of that, we have his interpretation, we have the lecturer's interpretation, we've got other images of the way other people have interpreted this dish. So boys, we've given you pretty much everything that we think that you'll need. There is just one thing missing to make this incredibly authentic. Silly. <laughs> I feel silly. <laughs> no, you're real chefs. How do you want to divide this up? Um, what if I just pass you ingredients <laughs> and you cook them? Noisette potatoes, let's get those on the go. Yeah, we're going to turn these, aren't we? But it aren't aren't no no noisettes potato nuts? No. Okay, I, I have misinterpreted this recipe then. Because oh, I thought it already? would be potatoes cooked in brown butter. But I thought they were nut shaped. N you really think Escoffier is like, make some nut shaped potatoes? <laughs> Burn noisette means br butter that's become nutty brown. Yeah. So it's a shade of colour. But why are you. James, when was the last time you turned a potato? Um, I don't know, I don't want to say 10 years because that'll age me. What is turning a potato? Isn't it better when potatoes all look like barrels? And for that reason, there's a turning knife that looks a bit like this and you use it to prepare potatoes so they don't look like potatoes anymore and in fact look like barrels of spud. How are you doing? I've turned two nice ones and one's terrible. But I'm also going to do some of these because I'm pretty sure this is also a thing. I wait to see if you can turn some potatoes <laughs> better than I can because mine are terrible. Mise en place, getting there. Few discussions, this is where we've ended up. Potatoes. I've done this to them, kind of ball shaped. You've turned them much better than my two turned. Which one are we going to go for? My, my ones. My ones. My ones. Turned potatoes it is, either way, parboiled in salted water and then pan fried in brown butter. Also got a pan of salted water coming up to the boil for those things grown above the ground. We will do those last. Peas, asparagus, cauliflower. Turnips I've also done. They look good. Under the ground, cold water. In with the potatoes. Are we going to risk? Scoffy, I wouldn't like you. No, I know, but I know he's doing the washing up. So uh, this is fish stock that we've heated up. Now we're going to poach the sole. Are we doing fish stock? Or are we doing court bouillon? Oh, let's add a few flavours to it. Bay, peppercorn, parsley stalks, lemon into the fish stock. So you're poaching in a court bouillon. Court bouillon. Herbs and stuff. Cheers, mate. Thanks. But we're not going to cook the fish yet, right? No, last minute. A la minute. Last thing is our white wine sauce. We're doing a beurre blanc kind of reduction. So white wine reduced down with a little bit of vinegar and then you whisk in cold butter to create a classic beurre blanc. But the book says white wine sauce. What are we going to do instead? Is it a velouté? Go on, do it. 
It's a beauty. Do we do we just make a roux, cook it off, cream at the end? I think all of that white wine reduced down with cold butter whisked in to emulsify it and thicken it, then you nappe over the fish at the last second. These are all words I haven't used for a decade, but are coming back to me. Over the fish. James, your knife technique is exceptional as always. It uh, is not. What are you going for? I went for a, for a very small dice, of something that we can heap. So it still looks um, smart. But heapy. But heapy. So in that extensive recipe that we've talked through, it doesn't mention anything about the fleuron. There's nothing about puff pastry. How do you know it's supposed to be there other than us? putting the puff pastry there for you. Seeing the puff pastry that you had prepared for us reminded us of dishes that included it. So the fleuron was a disc of puff pastry. It was just assumed to be there. And the reason was, was to show off. You didn't have pre-packed puff pastry back then. You had to make it yourself. And because it was such a difficult thing to make, it was there to show off the skills of the chef. Just as a little, by the way, I'm very, very good. And just that's good it. or bon? Good. I am so bon. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to egg glaze our puff pastry? I think the answer is yes. I thought they were fried, not baked. I really think they're fried. You fried two, I'll bake one. It doesn't really matter because there's nothing to say we're right or wrong, it's just a guide. No, no, that's the whole point of this video. They're going to tell us that we're wrong at the end. <laughs> well, exactly. So it doesn't matter what we do, they're going to tell us we're wrong. No, not if we do it right. <laughs> and this is how a 10 year friendship ended. No, we should fry the puff pastry discs. No, we should bake them. Why is this turned into a battle? It's not a battle. We're working together on this. I don't feel like we are. Reduction. Into that, we can whisk cold butter and finish with cream. Rechauffant. Is that it? Oui. We can reshuffle at the last second. So our turnips are nearly done, we can take them out, they can cool down, that's fine. <laughs> What's your problem? Ben's speaking French. Right. <laughs> sorry, Ben, I'm sorry. I don't think you are. I am, I'm, I... Je suis désolé. Just stop, stop. <laughs> Excuse-moi. Stop. I'm frying off my fleurons, because that's what I think I remember doing, but Ben assures me it's wrong. Not as sure, I just remember the heart-shaped ones being baked. But these aren't heart-shaped, Ben. Correct. Did Brown butter, potatoes going in. Carrots going into cold water. The beurre blanc, there's only a little bit left. Cold diced butter, a little bit at a time, gets whisked in. These are looking nice. Potatoes cooked in butter. Sole, fillets. Thicker at one end than the other. So traditionally, I remember them being folded over and cooked like that, so that you end up with something that's more even and cooks more equally. This is a very, very fine white fish. I don't know whether it's supposed to be poached in a court bouillon, but we've done that because we know that is a classic option at times. Taking a lot of care with the poaching of the fish because we don't want to boil it, so just leaving that water just below boiling. All right, you've got five minutes of cooking remaining. Getting very hungry. And for our next disagreement, <laughs> I've got a plate. Only thing I was thinking of is we now know that the reference to what we're doing has been provided to us by UCB, and I know the plates they use are just classic round whites. Ben, we're using this plate. I'm gonna put some peas in here. Reheating the perfectly cooked mise en place veg in a pan with some water and a little bit of butter that's seasoned, just brings it back up to temperature, gives it a nice glaze. Now, alternating colors. How's the fish? The fish has been in there for ages. These two are good. Five, four, three, two, one. Gorgeous. Glad we don't cook like that anymore. I, I really enjoyed that. It was good fun. The best bit is, it now has to be tasted by probably the least qualified person available to know whether this is exactly what it should have been. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Do you wanna talk me through what we got? The centerpiece is our sole fillets, poached in a court bouillon and coated in a white wine sauce made from a beurre blanc reduction. We have some uh, noisette potatoes, and then we have some very simply treated veg. We've got asparagus, we've got carrots, we've got peas, we've got cauliflower, and we have turnip. And we have got a fleuron, which is a crescent of puff pastry, which was cooked in a pan and dipped in chopped herbs. I'm actually super happy with it. I think it looks great. This and is it really tastes unusual good. For you, yeah, yeah, I know, but I think it looks really good. Well, here I have a few different versions that were made at your old university. Let's start with the lecturer's interpretation. Interesting. Very similar elements, 
some elements completely different. The sole looks very similar, folded over and poached, and the fleuron looks very similar. The sole is grilled as well. I wouldn't say that's a heap of... That's not a heap of carrots, is it? Come All on. Right, just don't have a go at your lecturer. Sauce consistency, it's very similar. This so is Aussie. This is his interpretation of the dish. Crispy skin. They are very different potatoes than I was expecting from a noisette. Is that pastry underneath the asparagus? I think With so. stuff in it. Interesting. We went very different. This, we're going to have to zoom in a bit because this is a group shot of all of the groups. Interesting, so it's like a leaf-shaped um, puff pastry disc. The thing that I find most fascinating about this whole exercise is you've made this plate out of that 20-word description and then looking at everyone else's, they've made completely different looking tasting dishes using the same ingredients and using the same guideline and if that is not a summary of what food actually means then i don't know what is we're not judging are we we're just i'm judging yeah but you're judging yourself yeah cheers oh oh buttery potatoes i have to say that sauce is lovely and sharp you get the slight herb the herbiness in there it's so creamy so buttery slight acidity sharpness from the wine reduction but that is that is great we did a great job i'm chuffed with that and you know that i would say if we didn't do a good job i know you good job team well done boys that is absolutely awesome are you going to recommend that book to the audience yeah break the brave ones the brave ones <laughs> <laughs> we've made these two chefs cook from a few different cookbooks now ranging from the serious to the not so serious we've put a playlist of all of them in the link box down below and we'd love to know from you what other cookbooks should we get them to cook from next because i really like these and people seem to like them as well because it takes you outside of your comfort zone more classics that's why we love it too not just classics novelty another classic What's novelty other... generally involves oh yeah we have fancy dress in this one as well <laughs> If you're enjoying these videos and this channel, then make sure you subscribe and, of course, ring that notification bell. Pause the video and do it now. Our latest book, Hero Veg, is shipping at the end of this week, so there's still time to get yourself a copy. Find all the information you need to sign up to the club in the box downstairs. I was, I got really arty with this one. You did, didn't you? So macro. It is. Oh, so, ooh, look how close up we are. You've got some really ooh. great apertures in there. Shut you? up. Dum 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 dum. Breakfast in bed. Oh. One of the nicest things you can do for someone, yeah, right? Yeah. All it needs mm. is a thank you at the end of it. Not a, how did you get into my house? <laughs> <laughs> Very Jamie. Yeah, yeah, Very no, Jamie. Tell me about it. As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. I think there was a video recently where you and I were stood next to each other. I don't think it's aired yet. God, I look short. <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs>